My name is Mark Simcox, I'm the Director of Healthways and I run the 10 pin bowl here at Healthways. We purchased the centre in 1996, it's now 2021, so that's 25 years. We have eight lanes, Brunswick bowling machines, synthetic lanes and Australia's last semi-automatic scoring system. As we've fixed it up, renovated it, we've tried to keep it sympathetic to the era it was built, which was the 1960s. And so we've kept the original ball returns and we've put in the semi-automatic scoring system. And that comes from the 1980s. So that in itself is 40 years old. The facility is 61 years old. You modernise, but you don't destroy what you have. You keep the features, you keep the good things about it. We've had the, the ceiling here completely filled with balloons so you couldn't see the ceiling for a function. Uh, we've had the American hot dog man with his little trolley and all that you know, serving up here. We've done some crazy things, but um, yeah, it's all good fun. Uh, without getting into too much trouble, um, one of the previous people was not doing what they were supposed to do and the place got raided by the drug squad um, and that was in the 80s. Um, so I better leave that alone. It's funny being back here after so many years, it just brings back, you know, so many great memories of probably at a time in my life when I was striving to, to you know, to, to get to that peak level in the sport. I remember spending, you know, hours and hours here training, uh, always bowling on different lane conditions, you know, doing different things to prepare for getting ready to go overseas. Cara came here and bowled here very regularly in the mid-90s to early 2000s? Probably about three times a week I used to train here, uh, whether that either be just straight out training sessions or uh, also bowling league one night a week here for many years. I was never a fan of bowling for, for hours on end. I'd like to just come in, uh, do fairly short, sharp sessions um, and really concentrate on, uh, on skills, on playing different parts of the lane, practicing different releases and using different bowling balls. So uh, probably a, a, a typical session would last an hour to an hour and a half, three, four times a week. The important thing for me, particularly when I was preparing to go overseas, was making sure that the lanes were prepared uh, in a similar lane condition to what I was going overseas for. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a bit crazy actually. Uh, you know, obviously just, just being in the Commonwealth Games for the first time, it was a, it was a bit of a unique uh, experience. Uh, we, we got quite a lot of a media attention leading up to the Games because it was the first time that it had been in the, included in the Games, but certainly didn't prepare me for, for what, I, what I got when I landed in Malaysia because bowling is a, is a, is a huge, hugely popular sport in that country and that was one of the sports that they saw as an opportunity to win uh, numerous medals in. So it, uh, it certainly was a shock when I got there, that's for sure. I landed and I cleared customs and was walking you know, to, to get out of the airport and all of these people just started running towards the athletes that had got off the plane. And the first thing that I did was immediately turn around uh, to, to, to think to myself, oh, I wonder who these people are running towards and they stopped at me. And, uh, and I certainly wasn't expecting that and had basically had a microphone thrown under my nose and said, uh, what do you make of Operation Cara? And I said, what's Operation Cara? And uh, they said, oh, haven't you heard about that? And I said, no. And so I said, tell me more. And I said, they said, oh, it's a, it's a plot by the uh, Malaysians to, uh, to try and put you off your game. So I guess that was, that was welcome to KL, welcome to Malaysia. I'd been there many times before. Uh, but I, I wasn't prepared uh, for, for that sort of scrutiny, to be honest. I thought I'd just get, get on the plane, go over there and sort of fade into the background. Uh, so it was a bit, of a, a bit of a rude awakening for me. Her average during the Commonwealth Games was 243, I believe. She won gold in the women's single, the women's double, the mixed double. And if she'd been able to bowl in the men's, she would have won that as well. 
So that was obviously uh, you know, a great thrill to be in an event that wasn't just a bowling event, it was you know, multi, multi-sport. Uh, obviously Commonwealth Games gets a lot of uh, attention in Australia. It's, it's something that's uh, really sacred and, and part of the Australian uh, DNA when it comes to sport. So to be able to go to an event like that and participate was obviously just, a, just one of the great highlights of my life. Uh, and to come home with three gold medals was obviously a dream come true. So that would, that would certainly be um, up there with some of my uh, greatest achievements. I haven't actually bowled that many of them, to be honest. Um, I've had 10 perfect games in my career, which by standards these days is, is not a lot. Uh, they're quite common uh, for, for people who are relatively skillful in the sport. Um, 300 isn't, isn't what, it, what it used to be. Uh, so no, I, I never, I got close a couple of times, but never actually had a perfect game here. These are Brunswick bowling machines. They're Brunswick A's and the A stands for automatic. The first Brunswick machines were B's and they were semi-automatic. But these were fully automatic and we've upgraded most of them to A2's. So they run slightly faster. They were shipped from the factory in Muskegon in August 1960. So long as they're maintained, they should last another 60 years. I can listen to a machine and tell you what it's doing. They just go and go and go. They're extremely reliable, extremely easy to fix. In the 1960s, a young woman that had that buffy hairstyle uh, came down to help and somehow or other her hair got caught up in the belts and she was nearly scalped. Uh, they stopped the machine, but they couldn't disentangle her hair. And so they basically gave her a crew cut. We got the synthetic lanes uh, nearly eight years ago now. Timber lanes start off four and a half inches thick. When they drop below four inches, they're at the end of their life because their boards like that vertically with nails skewed and once you get down to start hitting those nails you basically have to throw them out or do something with them. The synthetic lanes are double-sided so if you keep them clean, keep them oiled and no dust and no dirt on them they should last for about 25 years per side. At the end of 20-25 years you just unscrew them, flip them put them back down and you've got another 20, 25 years. The semi-automatic scoring system we have um, comes from computer score up in, at Tweed Heads. And these units themselves we found in Maruchi door and then we got computer score to fix them up, put in the soft touch uh, buttons instead of the computer keyboard style of button. We've still got them. I'm Patrick Bertie. Um, I run the pro shop here at uh, Zone Bowling in Baronia and have been since 2009. So I've been with the company for the past 16 years, have been doing this pro shop stuff for about 40 years. The only thing that I sort of knew of, of Healthways was that it was a, a little bowling centre in Box Hill that uh, was very, very well known back in the in the 60s and 70s uh, as one of the the top places for where most of the best bowlers uh, competed in the early 80s probably i used to be involved with a coaching clinic that uh, was being held at uh, chester bowl and then i moved it all over to the squash bowl which was the name of healthways before it was called healthways I set up my business, which was Bowler's World at the time, back in the you know, early 90s. I helped uh, get the manager uh, into there as well, which was Rob Zickman at the time. Between the two of us, we ran the pro shop and ran the bowl and built up the business for about 12 months. The business wasn't doing very well, bowling was. Um, I don't think it was doing too well in the other areas. I mean, squash squash courts weren't faring too well. John Sooners, who was the owner, got us in there. I think he got us in there to sort of help the bowling side of it. Um, and maybe that may have helped 
the other side of it as well. And after that, uh, the place uh, was sold, and I think Mark uh, was the one that uh, that purchased it afterwards. I've coached uh, Lee, Lee Booth, who is still bowling today. Lee's in her late 50s, and she was in her 20s uh, when I started coaching her. She won the Australian Open. Certainly drew balls for pretty much most of the top players in, in Victoria around that time. Um, Ian Bradford, uh, Cara, uh, Rob Zickman, Mark Malloy, Frank Ryan. These were all pretty much most of the top players. So ball drilling was something that I taught myself. I read most of the books, and the books didn't tell me much more than what I already knew. So you learn as you go, and uh, you make it up as you go, I guess, and, and it becomes trial and error. So I'm still here 40 years later. I must have done something right. Rob Zickman is uh, a very prominent uh, bowler. Um, started bowling in the 60s, and he pretty much was one of the top bowlers of the years. I'd met him uh, a few years prior to that and uh, from there um, became friends and uh, then became I suppose colleagues in some way, shape or form. Uh, Rob Zickman was the person who discovered Kara Honeychurch. So Rob ended up being her coach for a number of years and, and certainly helped in her success. The Australian Open um, was classed as an open event, so any male or female could bowl in it, and she just chose to bowl in it and won it four times. And there was, you know, bowlers of, you know, the up and coming uh, two-handed bowler, um, Jason, I think his name is. Yeah, he was a superstar back then, and uh, I think I remember actually her saying that uh, in her in the victory speech at one point saying that you know Jason was going to become a superstar in the near future and she was certainly right with that and uh, he proved himself and, and certainly uh, as we know now. The years that I was coaching over there was probably one of the more fond of memories. Um, a lot of the people that I was coaching back then I still see today. Healthways is a centre that uh, and a business that's been around for a number of years. It has its, its history um, and we admire it because of that, that it's still around and that it's still going, in whether it's exactly the same as what it was. Um, I don't think anything can be the same as what it was, but uh, the fact that it's still there and operating successfully is, is a tribute to the people that own it now and, uh, and good luck to them. Uh, 2020 is a big shutdown. We were closed for 36 weeks. It was horrendous. Before shutdown, everything was going along just as normal. And then 23rd of March, bang, we shut down. We didn't open up until the 9th of November. So it was a huge length of time. And it gave us time to do maintenance. But um, it was just, ugh. We're still here. I think family life has been changed for 10 years. I think um, society has been changed for 10 years and things will just have to adjust. And that three to five years before people's memories of what it was like after becomes a new normal and what it was like before is forgotten. I think it will be positive getting back to normal overall. It will just take time. We're putting in a second pool here and we're putting in a function centre for the bowl above that pool and that will, that will change the dynamics of the bowl because we'll be able to much more easily have functions here. I've bowled in many places, including squash bowl, and all the bowling centres that are no longer around. But you know, just just remembering back on the history, you know, is is gratifying and uh, and heartwarming. And uh, you know, we wrote a book on it. I hope Healthways is around for another at least another 50 years, and I hope I hope it retains um, its beautiful charm. Uh, there's just something magical about about this place. Um, 
that uh, you know, even though it's a little bit different than the last time I was here, it's still the the the, the bulk of it is still as I remember it, and um, as I as I walk in here again, it still feels like home that I haven't been to for a really long time. So, it makes me want to get out and bowl again. <laughs> Being the oldest bowl in Australia, having opened in 1961. A lot of people around Australia know it's here. A lot of people in Melbourne know it's here, but it's not their first choice when they go bowling. And so that's what I want to make it become, their first choice. They came here when they were kids. They're now adults, they're now grandparents, to bring their children and their grandchildren back here. And experience what they experienced but in a modern setting.